Hello everybody and thank you for joining me in this moment of time. I hope everybody is okay, I hope everybody is safe, everybody is sound and I hope you have a support system around you to pull off whatever it is that you feel called to do. Some of you might be looking to pack up and leave, <laughs> some of you might be looking to hunker down and continue fighting, some of you are interested in doing both. My intention f at this moment is to share with you some of the insights, some of the strategies, some of the actionable tools um, that have helped me as well as my clients over the years in navigating such big transitions, uh, responding to the changes that required them to personally transform, um, that required us to personally transform and also doing so with our families and businesses in tow because not everybody is able to just let, let me rephrase it. Not everybody is in this by themselves. Most of us have a, <laughs> a whole lot of responsibilities and commitments that we still need to uphold, including to our loved ones. I also wanted to say whatever it is that you're feeling and experiencing is valid. It has a place and it has a meaning. So, like I said earlier, I invite you to feel it all. Let it move through you, process it as it comes, um, and try to learn a lesson from it. Try to see what it is in it. Um, and that also means sometimes just releasing and let it go. Uh, in times like this, a lot of generational trauma will come up. And full disclosure, I am by no means a trauma expert. But I have been through my fair share deal of um, triggering situations when I know that things that came up for me, some were very valid, some were simply carried down and fears from somebody else that I had to process and realize and remove and release. So, um, I am thinking about doing a three-part workshop and let me know if this is something that you might be interested in, not just a workshop, but uh, kind of a masterclass interactive thing where we would dive into clarity, confidence, and capacity. I'll spend a little bit more time on that in this specific moment. Um, as well as how to navigate an actual physical move to a different location when you have a family and when you have a business or a career that also will need transitioning from, you know, finding the place... <laughs> Uh, arranging all the stuff, tangible and intangible, to pull it off. And then also how to integrate and really allow your family to thrive in a new space, which means adjusting to a new culture, um, navigating bureaucracy and new schools and new language and a lack of network and so on and so forth. I've been through it a couple of times in my life, uh, as recently as a couple of years ago with my family, when we did a... Um, across Atlantic move so I am happy to share some of the insights but let me get back to capacity clarity and um, uh, confidence why am I talking about these three C's so extensively first and foremost <laughs> first and foremost clarity is crucial and it is one of the most elusive things at the same time. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes we envision clarity as this big picture with every single detail painted. And if you're a strategist like me, also a entire plan from A to Z worked out, right? And all you go and you just follow the steps and there it is, your vision in life. But life doesn't always work that way, as we have just learned just recently, we can envision the most perfect plan and the things that we could not even phantom sometimes will come true. So clarity in this sense of the word, I would offer that sometimes can be just like a glimpse, a glimpse like a shooting star up in the sky. And it's up to us to catch those glimpses and hold them and simply trusting that whatever that we do, as we keep on moving towards them, the more will appear, the clearer picture will emerge. And so will the next steps. And that is probably some of the most complex parts of this process because there is nothing to hold on to but this vision and deep innate knowing and faith. There's also 
almost no way to justify this vision and your knowing and your actions to those around you who don't understand it. Those, those who are not experiencing and interacting with the world in the same way as you are. And make sure that you know that in this context of clarity, the most important thing is that it works for you and that it makes sense to you and nobody else. And when you know something in your heart, when you know something in your gut, it is way more powerful than an approval of somebody who just doesn't understand the whole picture. And also, I'd like to offer that sometimes we won't even know the whole picture. That is simply this one glimpse, one thing, and that gets to be enough. When you know it, you know it, it gets to be enough. Which now brings me to confidence. You need to have this confidence to move in the direction of that vision of yours, even though you have no idea how it's going to work out, even though you have no idea what the every next step is going to be, even though you have no idea what obstacles will arise, even when you don't know how you're going to pull it off. Um, I also wanted to share that in my experience, there are actually two pieces of confidence, two different um, experiences of confidence. One is probably one that we're the most accustomed to. It's, you know, an opportunity comes and we contemplate a little bit and like, okay, fine, I'll take a chance and I'll go. And you make one step and it happens again. It might be a little bit more risky and you're like, okay, fine, I'll go. This is waiting for me. This came up for me. I'll do it. Something entirely different is when you have to forge that path, when you have to create that opportunity for yourself, when you have to knock down the wall, when you have to build the wall, the doors and open the windows for yourself, when there's nothing on the other side and it is entirely up to you your vision, your imagination, your audacity to create it. That takes a whole different level of confidence. The beautiful thing is that throughout your life, I would argue that especially if you're a parent, you already have this muscle because what's more, <laughs> what greater immersion into the unknowing there is than being a parent. You don't know from today to tomorrow what is going to be when you're just accustomed and you vibe with a kid on one way something changes and their mood changes and they are a year older and they have different priorities and off you go you have to start learning it all again um, and we don't know what the future holds all we can do is hope for the best right so there you already have that muscle use it um, also think of other examples in your life when you have done this courageous thing because at the end of the day here's the thing you either believe in yourself and you don't you choose to believe in yourself or you choose to doubt in yourself it's this is one of the few black and white things <laughs> that are actually pretty easy and when you choose to do it you choose to do it one step at a time and every single step it's gonna get easier and as you keep on going every con um, sequential step will be easier faster decisions will be made faster and you'll be able to recognize obstacles you'll be able to recognize um inner resistance and ways that you would be sabotaging yourself and you'll be able to process that a lot faster as well as you go. And another beautiful thing to remember is that when we're talking about clarity and confidence, clarity emerges through action. Um, so they really go hand in hand and as you're moving, it's like a snowball effect. Once you have those two pieces, things get a lot easier right you keep on moving and when you're clear where you're going also the obstacles that will come up and trust me there will be plenty you will have the tools you will have the drive you will have the focus you will have the motivation you will have the inspiration you will have the resilience you will have the audacity to move over them, go around them, go through them, whatever it will take for you to get to that vision that you're holding, to answer the calling that's emerging, to honor that innate knowing of yours. That being said, let's touch upon capacity. What is capacity? Capacity has many different meanings to many different people. In my circles and to me personally, it comes down to physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual capacity. And what I mean by that is, first and foremost, physical is probably one that is the easiest to 
navigate. How many times you want to do something and you're like, well, I just don't have the time for it. Well, you prioritize things differently. Um, physical capacity, making room in a schedule, you know, physical capacity, making sure that you're physically capable and fit to do something or you have resources or you create a network or you build an infrastructure or leverage the existing infrastructure to get from point A to point B to do whatever that needs to be done. Then you have a mental capacity. A lot of high performers, you know, we are naturally born with that drive, with the determination and need to excel. So this is really in our own advantage because it will take whatever we have to move over those obstacles and to realize and to keep on going and to keep persisting. It is a lot of masculine energy and not so much feminine energy here, but use it, use it to propel you forward. And then you have emotional capacity. You know, emotional capacity is the way I see it. It's like a big bag with all the emotions in it. And the ones we focus on keep on growing and the ones we neglect are still kind of there taking up space but sometimes that can be very counterproductive. So make sure to keep grounded, keep yourself in check, keep processing, keep um, monitoring yourself, regulating your nervous system to make sure that you fuel yourself with emotions that will serve and support you and not the ones that will hold you back. And one of the simplest and fastest and easiest ways to check in is really going one by one by one tapping in how does it feel does it feel expansive or does it feel contracting and constricting and restraining and if it feels contracting restricting and restraining that most often is not serving you and most often I would also dare to say it might not even be your truth but the one that feels expansive and light and possible lean into that one see if you can expand further on that one and use that emotion that energy to propel you forward and speaking of energy now we're talking now we're kind of uh, crossing over into spiritual capacity and you know when i say spiritual capacity again spirituality is so many different things to so many different people everybody has their own definitions everybody has their own um protocols everybody has their own uh, ceremonies, belief systems, and so on and so forth. Use what fuels you, use what propels you. I personally was able to pull off some of my most audacious things by expanding my spiritual capacity. When things, when I ran out of the ability literally to see or feel or quantify my progress or steps or strategies or whatever it takes right there is the space beyond that exists lean into it hold on to it um, one of the simple phrases that i always uh, resorted to was faith in trust in trust faith in faith um, that was shared with me by a dear mentor and friend of mine and it was literally a lifesaver for me in many many situations when I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel when I could not see the solution F trust in trust faith in faith trust in trust faith in faith and it always came up and then again going back to clarity and uh, courage taking each next step knowing trusting believing that even when things seem to be going nowhere they can still appear releasing the need to control every single step and trusting that things will line up and things will work out in a way that absolutely need to and are meant to. And just a little side note, you know, if you are in my circles, then when we talk about spirituality, you might be familiar with human design, you might be familiar with um, jinkies, you might be familiar with the whole array of different tools and systems uh, and biohacking methodologies and so on and so forth. They are all useful and they are not laws written in stone. For example, one of my readings a few years ago said that I would never do an accomplished and experience certain thing. I knew in my mind that that was not true. 
I knew in my heart that that was not true and I knew it in my soul that it was absolutely not accurate. What I ended up doing, while well, being a little rebel that I am and a trailblazer and unconventional mystic, I set out to accomplish that very thing and here I am enjoying, experiencing, living that very life that um, the chart of mine supposedly said it was simply not in the cards. Well, like I said, it's a guide. It's not written in stone. You are the one who is guiding your life in partnership with whatever greater source and force you believe in. At the end, it is divine guidance and human effort, a combination of both. And human effort on your end consists of this capacity, clarity and courage. So cultivate that. That's the first step in the process. If you are interested, I would love to put together a workshop where we can go even into greater details and I can walk you through step by step um, processes and strategies and simply holding space and providing space where you can tap into it and not just in the passing of listening to this audio here. Um, and like I said, there's other parts as well that we would expand on and it would be my honor and pleasure and privilege to be able to guide you through, especially in these times that are turbulent and when you know that it's time for a massive transition and transformation um, and you are simply ready to take the leap. If you have any other questions, if there's anything else that you need, reach out to me. There's so many ways that you can find me. Um, I'm here, happy to support you and your loved ones in any way that I can. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, stay determined, stay focused. Um, and above all, remain a human being. Oftentimes as achievers, high achievers, we kind of forget about that part. We think we're superhumans, but we are humans after all. Sending you love. Talk to you later.